What's the biggest thing you learned over the, the extra three days you had about your group? Yeah, you know, we looked, I thought we did a good job of, you know, looked, taking these last three days and looking at some different things. You know, the one thing with the, with the mini buy, I guess you could say, or the self-scout evaluation process is we kind of self-scout each after every game, you know, like we'll say, hey, did we set up the plan? How did we execute? What did we call? What was good? What was bad? Why? Good or bad? Um, so, but you do get a little bit of a time where you can kind of chunk things together and look, okay, like this is what we need to improve on each call. This has been really good. Let's call it more. This has been not so good. Let's call it less. So, um, you know, it, it, you did get, I did get a, a little bit more time to do that with the three days, you know, that we kind of had where you don't get that as much on a Monday because you're kind of on to the next opponent. But, you know, it's, it's always been my job, like, you know, the grand scheme of things. How are we calling it? How are we executing? What can we get better at? What needs to be called more and what needs to be called less? So um, learn that we need to get better in situational ball, you know, which kind of knew that. And um, kind of, you know, moving forward, want to hang our hat on a few things that's been good for us, that we've been executing at a high level and guys are making a bunch of plays in certain defenses and certain calls. And we got to, you know, utilize those calls a little more often things around the other night when they you for they were starting to take they were running the ball early in downs and you guys were stopping and you were almost forcing them to do that. I mean was that the game was that what you would hope to happen in the first two drives is to is yeah. to force when you have an explosive offense like that with a with an elite quarterback you're taking the ball out of Tom's hand and forcing them. Forcing yeah, them like you know it's certain with and how you call it too, that's a good question. Certain when you know the flow of the game kind of changes, you know, where they got up and then, you know, they, how you have to defend people, you know, when you're walking into a game might change. And, you know, as the course of the game goes on, are we up? Are we down? What are they doing? You know, so um, I feel like our guys, we did kind of change a little bit as we got going. Um, and our guys executed at a pretty good level and uh, had some chances. It was good to see us get back in that game, you know, kind of in the second half, second quarter, second, third quarter, fourth quarter. Um, but, you know, our guys are emotionally stable to know, hey, this is how we said we're going to start out the game, and this, this really wasn't working. Uh, we didn't execute, you know, great to start, and let's change some things or, you know, let's call some different things to get our guys executing at a little higher level. So um, I feel like just would have liked to start a little bit better from an execution standpoint earlier in that game to keep points off the board. Um, but, you know, we're always kind of working to, to do that and set our guys up with the best position, put them in the best position possible. I know it's a week-to-week -week thing, but do you subscribe to the idea that if you <coughs> force uh, teams to run early uh, over the long course, it'll benefit you guys? I personally do. I, I you know, to me, the ball travels faster in the air than it does on the ground. Now, saying that, you have to be good on first and second down with, you know, the, the self-scout deal. You know, we've been in a lot in third and shorters, third and shorts, you know, two, three, four. And, you know, that's just not, well, how do we get better on third down? Well, let's get better on first and second. I left someone, you know, you said, Zach, like, how do you become a good third down defense? Get to third and long. Well, to do that, that's kind of a joke, but it's not. To do that, you got to play pretty good on first and second down. So it's always the blend of, hey, what are we trying to take away on first and second down to where we're not, you know, you know, giving up explosive plays or we're, we're okay in the run game and be able to get it to those third and medium, third and longer. So there's a blend of that, and that really falls on me how I call the game. Um, because when, when I'm aggressive and I call it aggressively, our guys, you know, they perform. And we and it seems like you know looking at the three the for the three days uh, when we have been aggressive early downs, you know there's a pretty good clip where we're getting it to third where we want it to be on third down. So that was part of the reflection for myself. Hey, that's you know that's maybe call the game a little more aggressively. Uh, Rodney talked a little first. bit. Uh, sorry, JJ. Uh, Rodney talked a little bit about the third down to Antonio. Um, I think it was Marcus and Rodney double teams. Uh, is that a, is that a call you liked? I think it was Dime. Um, how did how did? <laughs> that was my question. Is that for me? That was going to be my question. 
Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. So go ahead, John. Anyway, did, did you like that call? Was it execution? Yeah, I, it? I did like the call. I, you know, we had a couple calls up out of dime. You saw we got off on the one that was a, a kind of a new look. Uh, you know, going into the game, we wanted to give Tom some unscouted looks, and we know that he's seen it all. Um, but we kind of had those in our back pocket for, hey, there's three or four snaps on third down, depending how the game goes, you know. There's, we got about two or three calls out of this dime package that where we think that we could win a third down just because of it's a different look and playing some different things. Um, I would say on the last one, all 11 of our guys have to execute, you know, to, to get off the field. And that's how it always goes. It's not just never about one guy, uh, you know, where – well, and, and, to the, and to the eye, you know, my wife is, well, this guy screwed that call up. You, no, no, he didn't. Like, there's another 10 guys that were doing something that, that execution is all 11, not just one guy. So you, somebody, you see a touchdown pass given up. Well, that's not always just that guy that you see that, well, he gave up the touchdown pass. No, there's some other things going on within that play. So... You know, and ultimately that one comes back to you, John, is we got to set our guys up a little bit better so we put them in a better position to execute. So that's all that kind of was. What are your expectations when you put a young, experienced player like Davion Taylor out there for a long period of time? Um, I mean, my expectation is is anybody that we put out there is going to play winning football for us. And that's why you see, you know, the number of guys that play for us from the D-line, the linebackers to the secondary. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to accentuate their skill sets and get them in the game um, to, to help us play winning football. So my expectation of all our guys that play is to play winning football. It seems like, it seems like there was a play follow experience, honestly, matters for something. Yeah. And with him, do you have any level of certain patience on things that he's – Yeah, I, I, have, I have patience with all our guys, I think. You know, and, and just because, you know, if you're a vet and you've played a lot of ball, this is, you know, what we're asking our guys to do might be a little bit different or, you know, the coverages or the run fits or whatever that is, is it's all it's – a, it is a new system. Um, but, um, you know, for younger guys, yeah, you know that you're going to – they haven't – you know, they haven't seen everything that a vet would see. You know what I mean? Like, you know, there's certain plays in, in a game that go on that we did not practice that. You know what I mean? You, there's only so many things you can practice. But I always talk about guys that they need time on task to improve. And those unscouted looks or certain situations that come up, they can kind of like quickly go to their, their memory and be like, oh, my, oh, that was that. And then boom. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, I played in Indy. A good example is we played with a lot of young guys in Indy. And that was a little bit when we got there who, you know, what the roster was and who we had to play with. And, and I, I like that. You know what I mean? Because they, they our guys try to do what we want them to do. And um, but knowing that you're, they're going to get some things in games that you're going to be like, huh? You know, he's never seen that before. That's tough, coach. You know what I mean? Especially within the pass game, really. Um, so, you know, my expectation is everyone that goes out there to play winning football and, and our the patience level comes with we got to make sure we're not making the same mistakes over and over and over. That's where I would think it goes. Percentage-wise, there was, there was a little bit less rotation on the defensive line in this game. It seemed like you stuck with the four guys for the majority of the game. What went into that? A little bit. Just I think how the game went, you know, where it started with the two long drives and we were kind of rotating a little bit more, and then we started to get them out on some shorter, you know, so we had some shorter drives. And that, that always is, a, you know, what packages do we have up? What are we trying to get done within that call, within that package? Who's up and playing? You know, I always go down in between series. How you guys feel? How you guys feel good? You know, and we knew that we had a little bit of a break. And, you know, we, we liked our matchups with the guys that played the majority of snaps. But with saying that, we do want to keep that to uh, everybody up on game day, and especially on the defensive line. You want those numbers to be, you know, decently balanced out. Um, and, and the reason for that is is when it's in the late in the ball game, you want your guys to be fresh. Why hasn't Ryan Kerrigan been productive? I'm sorry? Why hasn't Ryan Kerrigan been productive? Uh, 
On the stat sheet, you mean? Because in my opinion, he has been productive. Um, he's he, how would I quantify that? Is is he he lines up? He gets a line the correct way. He plays with his eyes the right way. He asks to do the techniques that we're asking him to do, and he's playing winning football within his role. And what I mean by that is is like somebody that makes a tackle on a run. Well, Ryan helped that guy made that tackle by how he crushed the block. So that's why I don't always look at. You know, and with Fletch moving back a couple of weeks, like he he's balling. <laughs> you know, now the stat sheet might not you know jump out at you and be like, well, this guy hasn't have ten sacks or six, whatever TFLs, this and that. But within the framework of what we're asking those guys to do, they're being productive. Now, with saying that, we can all you know a DB. He didn't have any interceptions. He didn't get any PBUs yet. But when the ball came to him six times. He had two, gave up two completions. That's a winning day for me with no PBUs and no interceptions. So he's not allowing his guy to catch the ball. So there is – and but production is a way to measure. You know what I mean? So you always have to, as a coach, you know, what's the blend of is this guy playing winning football for us and who is producing when, we, when the plays that are there for him to make, does he make them? And I think he is doing that. As the personnel develops in the ball team, would you like to get to a point <laughs> – where you have two linebackers who are your three down linebackers, or is it your personal philosophy that, that you always want to mix and match at that spot? Yeah, I, I kind of, I mean, you know, if you have a if you have a, a guy that's impacting the game on first, second, and third down, you're not going to want to take him off the field. That's any position. Um, I do with the with especially with the D line and the linebacker spot, guys that we have up on game day. I feel like we feel like we can play winning football with those guys within the role that we give them. And that's really the reason for you see a lot of linebackers in the game is, hey, this guy does this really well, let's keep him in that spot. Or this guy does this in this certain package, this is what we're going to ask him to do. This guy's a little bit better than the other guy at these certain techniques within that call, let's put him out there. So. You know, it always comes down to, you know, can you afford to take a guy off the field or not? If you can't, then you leave him out there, you know. But if you have some other – if you have a bunch of different guys that can play winning football within the star, within their role, let's play them, you know. So that's kind of how you see that going. Uh, Fletch mentioned last uh, two weeks ago that you know the system was an adjustment for him and having to play two two different roles was mm -hmm. an adjustment. Obviously, he felt like he needed to perform at a higher rate. Uh, what have what have been your conversations with him about that, and and what have you seen since then? Yeah, we I mean we've we not since then we we talk weekly on the game plan and what you know what how we're gonna play this week. Um, Fletch is a very smart player, uh, and I get a lot of information from Fletch. And like I said way back when, it's, it might not, I might think a certain thing, hey, like we're doing this, you know, that's good for you, right? And he'll, he'll tell me, well, not all the time because I, I, I could get this block and that doesn't really, you know, it's not really great for what you think in your mind. So, you know, I do that with all our players. You know, I ask our guys all the time, hey, you know, the back end, you like this coverage, you know, I'm, t I'm calling this coverage to take away this. Do you guys see it like that? Yeah, this is really good versus that. Sometimes they're like, no, not really. This is putting that guy in hard duty. Okay, then we can change. So I think that uh, Fletch is doing an excellent job with what we're asking him to do. He'll keep being highly productive for us. And I mean, he's he's a he's a tool that we utilize weekly because we understand that team's game plan for him differently than they game plan for just a, a normal defensive tackle because of the player that he is. So, um, you know, I love Fletch. He's doing a great job.